Welcome, viewers of Blue Smooth Radio in a sizzling hot pier. We're here backstage with Mike Zeter between two gigs. He just finished his own gig, and that was a beautiful gig. Thank you very much. I not met many people who want to stay, uh, want to keep an uh, audience quiet with singing with no microphone in such a vast audience. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is that I got to the edge of the stage and I thought, oh man, can I do this? This is a lot of, there's a lot of people. This is not a club, you know? And I looked down at my friends here and I said, you think I could do this? And they went, yeah, yeah. And I thought, all right, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out, you know. That means you're you're open for uh, any gag or gig or. Uh, well, hey man, it, it's, as long as it's not a gag, as long as it's like part of the, the groove and the feeling and feeling it, trying to make it real. Uh, I'm, I'm not interested in the shtick, you know, so to speak. Uh, but I, I like you know, I would see the older blues singers do that and the hollers and uh, have a lot of respect for like man, there ain't no microphone or nothing, and these guys are, and. Um, so I tried to start doing that some years ago, and uh, you know, uh, I think when you're honest about it, it, they know you're not just trying to be a pull a trick. Well, you have to have the power in your voice also, and you, you, that's one thing you have. Practice on that, or it's God given. Uh, I I don't know. I think I just sing a lot. I've been singing a lot all my life, and um, just push down and push the air as hard as I can and hope it. <laughs> Well, you, you live in Austin, and it's Austin temperatures for you, so you're used to giving two gigs in one day. You're on stage with the Southern Royal Brother of the Royal Southern Brotherhood, and is that extra uh, well, exhausting for you with this weather, or is it business as usual? <laughs> it's, it, we don't do, I haven't, you know, when I'm with the Brotherhood, we don't do this very often. It's usually just the Brotherhood. Uh, so this was kind of a special day for me, and I was excited to get to do... Uh, um, some blues and some of my songs, um, so I have plenty of energy for it today. And uh, but uh, to, you know, the rest of the tour will carry on with the Brotherhood, and uh, so it'll be good. So about Mike Zito of uh, Mike Zito, where, um, you, you were uh, addressed in the in the flyer from the festival as someone who did what he could do wrong, he did wrong in his life. And but at a certain point, he realized if you want to have a career, you should change some things. What did it for you to say, now I'm a musician, I'm a real musician, and I do everything that, takes, that comes with it? Well, um, first, I mean, you know, I had quit playing music, more or less, because I was doing a lot of drugs and drinking. And I'd been doing, working really hard on the music for a long time, and then it just kind of went... And I had a family, and that, everything just kind of went to the wayside. And then when I quit, when I, I got some help, and I learned how to, to not to say no, you know, that was first. And then I worked on trying to, to get my family back and have a family. And then I thought, well, okay, let's see if I can play music again, you know. And I started to play music again. And uh, it was um, like, oh, you know, you could make a career out of this now <laughs> if you don't, you know, when you get paid and you go spend all the money at the bar or you go buy drugs, you know, you're not paying any bills. And, I thought, you know, if I took this serious, like a career, like a business, and, and put my heart and soul into it, you could actually make your dreams come true if you went and worked for it. Before, I used to always think, you know, it's ego, it's, a, uh, you know, I'll just go do... You have to work hard at anything in life, you know? And uh, so that's what I did. I just want, I put, put, besides putting my heart into it, I put my back into it and started working my ass off. Not just trying to be good, but show working hard, playing hard, showing up on time, doing a good job, shaking everybody's hand, being reliable, being honest, you know. Still learning the, the, the trade with tricks musical-wise. Who was, who was a big influence for you, for Mike Zito? Well, I mean, a lot of the guys in the Brotherhood, uh, you know, Cyril Neville is a huge influence, and Jan Rico Scott, and the, the, the guys in the band, you know, we all come from different places, so there's something to learn from each of them. That band's been very good for me, uh, musically. Um, but uh, I was just, you know, it's funny, you, you start out with these heroes when you're younger, and I went through all the other uh, boutique artists and people, and, and later in life, I'm back to the, uh, the people I started with, with B.B. Uh, King and the Allman Brothers and Eric Clapton, and, uh, you know, still, to me, those guys make great music, and they're still making great music, and uh, that's the music I try to follow. What's it? What's um, you just released the new CD, Gone to Texas. Uh, 
with your own songs on it. What are what are your um, what do you what do you write about? Music uh, text text wise. That 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 album um, has some songs about m when I moved to Texas and got cleaned up and got got off drugs and got my life together. That's what the the title track is about. Um, you know, the, Texas has been very good for me. There's there's a lot of political things about Texas. I have nothing to do with. But this where I we live, don't blame you. Yeah, and the people that I have met and my wife and it's been very good for me. So I write about that and I write about the area. You know, it's different than where I grew up, and uh, so it's on the Gulf Coast. It's uh, just it's different. So uh, I, the style of music, the way they play music. So I, I write all, you know about what I see and about my experiences there and about my life, and uh, and then I was able to cover some music by Texas artists that I really like. Lightning Hopkins, Blind Willie Johnson, uh, Delbert McClinton. So that was fun. I was not mistaken, I heard your Luther Allison song on stage. I did do Luther Allison song. That's just, that, that's not on that album, but he's one of my favorites. And uh, he was actually, you know, with Roof Records. That's, that's how I got turned on to Roof Records was by Luther Allison. Okay. And then uh, later in your career, that's your third CD, you, there was somebody who said, are you joining up for a, a band I have in mind? Or was it how came the Royal Southern Brotherhood to uh, in existence? Well, I was actually, um, I had just finished my recording contract with uh, Delta Groove Records, and everything had gone pretty well, um, and I was going to go and work with Roof Records. I had been producing some records for them. And at the same time, my manager managed Cyril Neville, Devin Allman, and we were writing some songs together. And we got together as a group to kind of try our songs out. And we liked it, and we went... We played some shows and we liked it and um, it kind of happened naturally at the same time so uh, I s we said well let's record as a group and I said well then let's go to Roof Records because I'm going to go to Roof Records with my next record and we kind of all went together and we put this band together and it just kind of took off and we really have enjoyed it so we said okay well I'll put our thing aside for a little bit and let's go do this because it's really special and we don't know how long it'll last, you know, but it keeps going, so it's uh, it's been wonderful. There's enough Mike Zito in Royal Southern Brotherhood for you. There is. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's a band. It's different, you know. So you have to. At first, everybody's got to get in there, and uh, everyone did a good job of of uh, leaving room for the other person. And sometimes you have to kind of elbow and knee your <laughs> way in. Um, that, look, that looks me the the, the the different part to make your own mark yes. in that band. Yeah, it's the different part of being in a band, and it's not uncommon. Uh, all the stories I've ever read about, I read the Rolling the Mick Jack, or the Keith Richards book, the Greg Allman book. They're all it's the same way. You see, in Black Country Communion, that was uh, launched as a supergroup, and well, it lasted two records, and they still have fights. Are we trying? Joe Bonamassa left. It's it's not easy because. <laughs> It's been, this has been easier than I thought it would be. Let's, let me say that. We've, it really has worked out much better than I, I thought it could have been, ugh, you know, a lot of tension. It, it's been very good. Um, and overall, I, I do think that in the end, everybody in the group has this, we want the music to be good. So we're, uh, you know, it, it, if somebody has to, okay, step back, they do it. If it's, it's good for the band. You produce it with James Gaines, and he is a... Well, he's an, he's an institute in the, in the world of uh, blues records producing. He's he a major help in that, or is he Absolutely. just a guy looking back, oh, hearing? No, no. He, he was the sixth Beatle in that, on that first record. He, he let us do what we wanted to do, but he also, he, he's, very, um, he's very smooth. He knows how to work the crowd and kind of, yeah, that was pretty good, but, you know, maybe we should do this, or, oh, I think I like that. He knows how to, to make it all kind of work. You know, so uh, he'll be there for the second record. So, what's what what's next on your wish list, musically wise, for Mike Zito? Well, the the Brotherhood will do. Um, the Brotherhood has a live album and DVD that comes out in October, that we did at Rock Palace. Oh, last that's year. that's uh, legends in yeah. live recordings. Then we uh, go in December and we record a new album, as a as the group. We have, uh, I have a couple of records I'm producing for some uh, younger artists. Um, I will do a live album and DVD with my band next year. 
we've kind of got our work cut out for us because of this plan that we've all conceived with the band and our own group. So we kind of build a camp. It seems like that's where it's at these days. You can help each other. Wish list, somewhere down the line, um, I think when I do another record, it's going to be some years from now, but um, I'd like to, you know, to really get in there and do some more, uh, some blues rock writing. Uh, I'd love to have a dream of Warren Haynes coming to work with me and produce my he's, album. He's today here, so you can ask him. I, I've, I've told him once before. I'll tell him again today. Uh, I, I really like I uh, look at him and think uh, he's a real hero. I like that he has the Allman Brothers, he has his Warren Haynes band, he has the government. Musically, it seems so fulfilling because he's got these things he can do and he plays different roles in each one. And uh, they're very similar but a little different. And uh, I really like that. To me, that seems fulfilling. So there's a middle, a middle American um, St. Louis Mike Zito guy. He had a real southern heart at this moment in his music. It's funny, yeah, and, and I grew up in South St. Louis, so, you know, if you want to go that could, way. Could be Eastless St. Louis. Yes. <laughs> they, were, it, it, they were, it was still, you know, kind of rough. No, I, I think I, I always have, uh, I think because of the music my father listened to, I like, I like it when things are a little south, everything's a little laid back. You know, even if it's rock and it's never ah, it's kind of ah, <laughs> you know. So I like that. I like that. Yeah. Mike, I'm gonna end this interview because the time is running out for us. Okay. You have almost got on stage. Betty Lavette is also on stage. So next up, you to you. Thank you very much for this interview and good luck in your good year. Very much. Take the last question.